Hello and welcome back. The title of this PowerPoint is Congratulations, You Turn to God from Idols to Serve a Living and True God. Why do I want to tell you this today? Because there is a troublesome idolatry of comfort theology spreading in evangelical circles, and it is not sound doctrine. What is the latest flavor of bad theology? Comfort is your idol. If your end game is comfort, that is idol worship. Your children are your idols. Your job is an idol. This can be packaged in various ways. Please listen carefully to what religious leadership says. These are This is bad theology. I'm more interested in what God calls idol worship. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. You shall not make for yourselves idols, nor shall you set up for yourselves an image or a sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. Moreover, you have seen their abominations and their idols of wood, stone, silver, and gold, which they had with them. You can find over a hundred verses in the Bible that define idol worship in this way. Let me ask you this. Do you still see this being practiced today? Of course. We still have people bowing to false gods today. This is nothing new. This is very old. And it's still an abomination. That's idol worship. Westminster Dictionary of Theological Terms defines it as this. A false god or representation of such a one that may be worshipped. Still going on today. God inspired the Apostle Paul to encourage the Thessalonians. For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. The Ryrie Study Bible notes this. People everywhere gave testimony to the conversion of the Thessalonians and how they turned from idols. This church was composed largely of converts from pagan religions and not Judaism. God sends you a message of encouragement. First Thessalonians was written in the year 51 AD. This is 2022, almost 2,000 years have passed. How is it possible that God inspires the Apostle Paul to write a message of encouragement 1,971 years ago, yet today we are nothing more than idol worshippers? For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. You're not worshiping idols. I'm not worshiping idols. I'm not bowing down to anyone other than God. God has you in his hands. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Well, I've put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I've inherited salvation, and I have ministering spirits looking out for me. I'm not bowing to false gods. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found to be a liar. Here is God's further refinement for idol worship. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which amounts to idolatry. So it's coveting that is the idol worship. That's the further explanation God gives in the New Testament. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Those that can diagram Greek passages tell me that the coveting is emphasized as idolatry. That would be Unger's Bible Handbook, Ryrie Study Bible, the coveting is the idolatry. What is coveting? It's an intense desire for that which does not properly belong to one, but belongs to another, as referenced in Exodus 20:17. So buying and selling is not coveting. If you want a new house, that could be that you're not content. So what? If it's for sale and you buy it, it's yours. If you buy a car, it's your car. 
as long as you're not coveting other people's things, but you're just buying and selling things that are in the marketplace, there's nothing wrong with that. That's commerce. God does not frown or forbid commerce. Beware the false accusation with no proof. If church leadership truly believes you are an idol worshiper, according to most church constitutions, they are required to bring an accusation against you for you to offer a defense or confess to that sin. So if they believe you are actively sinning, then they are charged with approaching you and talking to you about that. No one's ever come to me and told me I'm an idol worshiper. They only say it from the pulpit. I don't understand. The gospel is not to shame you or to give you a spirit of fear. Don't fall for the comparative riches shell game. If, like me, you've been paying into Social Security for 43 years, you are not rich. My mortgage, car payment, cell phone payment, utility payment, insurance payment, and property tax payments have not made me rich. Listen for these shaming cues. Your job is an idol. Your family is an idol. Your vacation home is an idol. Your ambition is an idol. If your end game is comfort, this is idol worship. None of these claims are sound doctrine. They are not sound doctrine. Christ warned us 2,000 years ago. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, all that they tell you, do and observe. But do not do according to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger. Are they living comfortably? Are they hiring their children to be part of the church? Hmm, interesting. God is a God of comfort and peace. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does, in heaven and earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, who makes lightning from the rain, who brings forth the wind from his treasuries. Who is there who speaks and it comes to pass, unless the Lord has commanded it? Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. God is responsible for my comfort. Electricity, natural gas, furnaces, air conditioning, refrigeration. God wants mankind to live so that we can come to know Jesus and worship him. Archimedes, Pythagoras, Newton, Galileo, Edison, Carrier, Borlaug, Einstein, Tesla, Curie, Salt, they were created at the exact moment in time that God wanted them to be created so that he could reveal new things to us. God gives all true science. Don't blame God if mankind uses it for evil. God meant it for good. What am I trying to say? Enjoy your comforts. God ordained it. You earned it. You paid for it. Be thankful and grateful to God. Hang on to your money so you can enjoy a comfortable retirement because I guarantee you, religious leaders only become millionaires after they join the ministry. But Peter replied, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. If you can buy a gift of God with money, the rich win here and the rich win there. Don't purchase fool's gold. Please like and subscribe. Remember, coveting is the idolatry, and praying to anything other than God is idolatry. The men who preach that you are an idol worshiper do not practice their own teaching. The Holy Spirit will direct you each and every day. If you have questions, you can reach me at powerpointpreacher at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in.